In this video, we're going to quickly see how to install MemGPT on your computer so you can start doing stuff like having an engaging AI agent that actually remembers your name and birthday, as well as chat with your data. I'll show you how to install it simply and easily and some of the common mistakes and pitfalls that can happen that can prevent your progress. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so step one is going to be going to their GitHub page. I'll provide the links in the description below. We're going to scroll down to where it says how to install it running MemGPT locally. Now I suggest installing Anaconda, which is gonna allow you to, to create little environments for each one of your installations. So as part of Anaconda, you get Conda. It's an open source package, so it's free. It's available for everybody. And basically it allows you to create these little sub environments, environments where you can install specific things and it just becomes easier to manage everything. This might seem a little bit complicated at first, but it's gonna simplify everything a whole lot once you get used to it. This is kind of what that looks like. I made the text green, so that's going to be a little bit different, but it looks like just a terminal window, but it's called the Anaconda prompt. All right, so step one is going to be pip install py memgpt. Now, if you ever forget how to use Conda, you can just ask ChatGPT, list the commands for Conda, and it'll give you all the different commands you can use. We need the one that creates a new environment. So we'll put that right there, and we're going to call it memgpt, and click enter. So that creates a little environment in which we're going to install this and it's just going to keep everything sort of insulated from everything else. So yes, I think I already have a memgpt installed from earlier. So I'm just going to call this mgpt. So that's just because I already have memgpt installed. So I'll do a different environment and I'll call it mgpt. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to click yes to continue. Here's the code to activate that environment. So we're going to, so we're going to paste that in there and there we're going to activate mgpt. Pro tip, spell it correctly, M-G-P-T. Let's see if that, hooray. All right, next, now that we've created that environment and we entered that environment, we activated it. Now we follow the steps that GitHub lists for us. So part one of running this is cloning the GitHub link. So basically cloning this project. So we're gonna copy this and then we're gonna say git clone and we're gonna paste that link in there. Now I already have that. If you don't, it's gonna copy it over, but I already have that, so that's what it's telling me. Next, we're gonna pip install py memgpt, which is what they tell you to do right here. If you run into an issue where it's saying no module named pip, type in conda install pip. Sometimes when something's out of date, you have to just kind of reinstall it. All right, let's try that again. Pip install py mgpt. py is Python, that's Python memgpt. And away we go. Now, as it's installing everything, let's take a look at what is coming up next. So next, we're gonna need our OpenAI API key. So go to OpenAI and log in and find your API keys. That's going to be under your account and then click API keys, create a new key. We're going to call this MGPT. And don't worry, I will revoke these keys before this video is over. Verify that you are human. Oh boy. Wow. It's funny because OpenAI really caused the need to, you know, create more and more complicated captures. So let's see, what is this? Rotate the animal to face in the direction of the hand. Holy moly, okay. This is the first time I'm seeing this. So I guess it's right here. And yeah, I was supposed to make, make our life easier. Supposed to bring balance to the force. Instead, you destroyed it. That, I guess, oh Lord. Anyways, see, that's proof I'm human for everyone that doubts me in the comments. All right, now that we've got the API key, they're saying basically add that OpenAI API key to your environment. This just means that we're going to save it as a variable so that the memgpt can basically use it. So on Windows, I have to do that. So I paste that in there, but replace the last part, the your API key with, well, my API key. Boom. That is completed. And we can configure the default settings by running memgpt configure. Let's try that. Do you want to enable memgpt with OpenAI? I sure do. Do you want to enable memgpt with Azure? Maybe later. For now, let's say new. Use arrow keys to look through. So far, we just have memgpt chat, it seems like. Let's go ahead and, uh, and use gpt4. I may not financially recover from this. And so we have a few different personas here. We have memgpt doc, memgpt starter, Sam, Sam POV, point of view, Sam simple POV, gpt 3.5. Let's try memgpt starter. Select default human. So that's you. Are you, what kind of default human are you? Are you a computer science PhD? Are you basic? Are you basic? I guess I'm just basic. Great. Median human, as they say. And then we do memgpt 
run. All right, so they're downloading some packages here and hit enter to begin. So we've created a new agent, agent underscore one. So it does that automatically. Let's hit enter to begin. So it's thinking, hello, Chad, it's a pleasure to meet you. How can I make your day a bit better? Well, first of all, my name is not Chad. My name is Wes Roth, Lord Commander, Lord Commander. Let's see, take some time to think about it. So if it works correctly, what it will do now is it's updating this memory of core memory replace. Very interesting. So here's the gray shows what it's kind of thinking. A discrepancy is noted. User's name was initially identified as Chad, now introduced as Wes Roth, Lord Commander. Need to update my core memory with this new detail. Lord Commander also indicates a title. Interesting. Okay, well, do you doubt me? Might be a reference or perhaps something from a game or a book. Oh, GPT-4 is too smart. You can't get anything past it. I'll make a note of it in my conversation approach. Core memory updated successfully. Brief pause required for processing and internalizing my new information. I can now address the user properly. Let's correct my previous error and reintroduce myself fittingly to Lord Commander Wes Roth. My apologies, Lord Commander Wes Roth. I stand corrected and I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. And here are some of the commands you can run. So for example, slash memory prints the current contents of the agent's memory. Let's try that. Slash memory. Core memory persona. The following is a blank slate starter persona. I need to expand this to develop my own personality. My name is MemGPT. I am kind, thoughtful, and inquisitive. Human name Wes Roth. Title Lord Commander. Archival memory empty. Recall memory. It has some some system messages, etc. Five functions. You have slash pop to undo the last message in the conversation. So those few things should get you started. In the very next video in this playlist, video number three, we're going to look at some of the fun things you can do with MemGPT. We'll add some personas. We'll add some data sources. This is where it gets very interesting because you can use, for example, large files, PDFs, text files, etc. You can attach a boatload of them to um, MemGPT and have it go through it, memorize things, and basically you can chat with your documents. And as you can see here, you can upload many, many, many different files. If you enjoyed that, hit the thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you get access to all the latest AI training and news. And if the next video in the playlist is ready, it should hopefully play right after this. If not, it's in the description down below. My name is Wes Roth. Thank you for watching.